When you talk about the turbidity test that he spoke of, of passing in one turn relative to the five that they allow you, and then also our basic hydraulics, we're outperforming on basic hydraulics and we're also outperforming on the cleanability side, right? Why should we have to move water through a unit five times to clean it? Should do it once. We're moving water through a filter to clean it. And that's what we've achieved with this cartridge filter. This is episode 204 with Todd and Steve of Aquastar Pool Products. Enjoy! Welcome to your go-to podcast for the pool and spa industry. My name is Tyler Rasmussen. And my name is Greg Diafania. And this is the Pool Chasers Podcast. All right. Well, thank you for joining us again on the show. Gentlemen, how are you doing? Doing great. Glad to be here. Thanks for having us. Yep. Good to be here again. Good to talk with you. And we're excited about what we're bringing to the table today. Yeah, absolutely. So let's let's jump right into it with the pipeline filter, right? So... Can you share with us kind of how this design came into play and what y'all worked on to get it there? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll kick off and say one of the things that because of my background being in the pool industry since 84, doing the safety and compliance kind of stuff, one of the very first challenging job experiences I had is I had to go to a pool where someone actually was um, killed by a filter uh, separation. And what had happened, it was a Friday afternoon. Um replace some uh, DE grids and put in a new pump. And then every, the boy, you know, the, it was a holiday weekend. So the guy's like, I'll, I'll be back Tuesday because Monday was a holiday. The homeowner was having none of that, had a party on Sunday and just went out and turned on the pump, you know, mm. flipped the breaker, turned on the pump, the clamp on the, the DE filter wasn't secured. Uh, it was just hand tight and the mm. homeowner didn't know it was impatient. And bottom line is it, the filter top blew off, knocked her against a block wall, and, and she passed away from it. That oh, wow. was the first experience I had with, whoa, these things can be really dangerous. And so when it came time, when Aquastar started talking about doing everything on the pad, including the filters, I was like, time out. We can do better than this. The single point failure um, of these nuts and bolts, they're deceptive and all that. Now, this goes back into the 1980s. So that technology is improved. But the bottom line is like, we got a great engineering team, go to work, let, make it so that when people do dumb things, we don't hurt them. And so that was really what kicked off the safety aspect of this design. Um, and then the engineering went into, you know, make it the biggest, the baddest, the most per- performing and all that. So that's really was my perspective on that. And then Todd has the the whole business side of it. Yeah, on top of um, making the safest filter on the market and, and the easiest filter to get into, our goal is always to take a product, if it's existing, and make it better. So hydraulic performance is always a big thing for us. We always want to make things more efficient, use less energy to move more water. And then... Um, Looking at the the cartridge filter industry, they're cumbersome, they're big, right? And we looked at a way to bring that footprint down as we see in um, technology in our world over the years, as we've seen on the, on the equipment pad alone in the heater. The heater's gotten exponentially smaller and, and it's gotten much more efficient. So uh, we looked at that aspect to, to bring that footprint down, make a more efficient unit, and then also uh, make it clean better. You know, cartridge filters are are good in our industry, but they're not great. And uh, we we set out to make a smaller footprint, more efficient footprint, and and um, cleaning water better. Yeah, the the engineering team as we look at because I, I think we're obviously well known for our drain covers, and we use computational fluid dynamics design and. It's all about controlling water so it doesn't twist and tangle hair kind of essence in that. So as we are looking at other products that move water, um, the filter being a prime example, we looked at how the water moves into and out of and also around the filter media. And so it's it gets its name because of the pipeline technology. But what that does is by having a uniform wall uh, pipe size shape instead of the belly that comes with a classic um, uh, filter is it's we're controlling the flow 
and the debris. So it goes clear to the top and all the way around the filter element. And then the filter element itself, we went into a lot of testing and engineering, taking a good design and what we think is improving it. So our pleats are very deep by comparison, kind of at the limits of what you can do with technology. And that's so that each pleat is fanned open. And not only is it open on the dirt side, but also on the core side of it so that the water you know, filters, but then the water on the back side of the filter has somewhere to go. So the core of the filter, this is all geeky engineering stuff, but it, it gives us the best in class performance. So the, the core, instead of just doing what everyone else had been doing, is we looked and optimized that. So it's got 64% more open area directly behind these pleats that are also open. And so we're using every square inch of these filter medias, and that's how we get the the hydraulic performance and the cleaning performance of filters double the size. And because it's this pipeline shape, it has this very compact space on the pad. And there's been some, you know, misunderstanding or, or it's new and anytime there's something new, but look no further than what's happened with the heaters. If you look at how big heaters were, Certainly back when I started in the industry, they were two thirds of the pad um, and now they're much smaller. And so all of that's driven by you have a job to do, do it in the smallest package possible. And that has benefits all across for handling, shipping, uh, sustainability. You know, there, there's you want to get the job done, but you want to do it as economically and with as small a footprint as possible. And that that's what this ended up delivering. Very nice. Yeah. I mean, when you think about technology, how it's advanced, right? The the variable speed pumps, the heaters, the uh, filters kind of been the same even since the 80s. You know, even since I started, cartridge filters have been the same 10 years ago. And I know beyond that, I see older filters, you know, that look exactly the same. So it makes sense to kind of take this area and try to upgrade that as well. There's interesting stuff going on. Um, I see an interesting trend and this is kind of unfolding now. And um, for your listeners that don't know, I'm heavily involved in the pool and hot tub Alliance. I chair the drain cover standard, but I'm also uh, the technical committee co-chair. So all of the ANSI standards that get public comments and things, even though I'm not a subject matter expert, I'm a party to and so the um, public pool standard for operation and maintenance, it's brand new that's in the final stages of ANSI approval. And it deals with public pool operation and maintenance. And one of the negative comments on that is it just has been using classic filter sizing that, you know, on cartridge filters, residential historically has been one gallon per square foot and public pools is point. Three, seven, a third of a gallon. Well, all of that I learned through really certifying going to NSF and all this is none of that really is making any more of a difference than the old full rated, up rated, side rated stuff that we did with pumps. Those were all labels. The same thing kind of seems to be happening with the filters. Ultimately, you go through a fil NSF 50 certification test and each filter gets a flow rating based on how well does it clean the water and then after it's cleaned the water can you clean the doggone thing you know can you get mm -hmm. the the yuck back out of the element it's a two-part test and we're seeing that there's no correlation between those rule of thumb best practices if some would call it that have been around um uh, as compared to the actual test results so this standard based on public comment from a professor and it's going to NSF, they're looking, and this happened already, is they're saying, ignore the square footage of your filter. What is its flow rate that you see on the label? And that's how you size it for public pool compliance. And you got to use the proper media and use the original cartridges or, or whatever. So that's changing. And I, I think it's striking me as the same thing that happened with the, the pumps is we used to put a different label on it, call two different, that was kind of marketing stuff. Right. It wasn't necessarily wrong, but it wasn't right. And I think the filters are headed down that 
that path now. Even absent that, um, are, you know, everybody who's involved in installing and servicing filters, this information's on them already. So you can right now focus on what does the label say on the filter that you're servicing or going to replace. Compare that to what your pool operating flow rates are and select a filter based on that because a lot of these giant filters have no higher flow rating and that's why we open them up and find they're half clean you know mm -hmm. top half is is clean filter or back in between the back inside is all plugged up with debris and the outside's clean and so um you know all of that will sort itself out as codes and standards change but in the meantime um the information you need is on these filters and and this one's a good one and in yeah. layman's terms, it's uh, the <laughs> cartridge filter is the next energy suck on the equipment pad that is going to be addressed. And we've done that with our unit. We've we have multiple patents on our unit. Um, again, from safety to hydraulic performance to cleanability, um, we are relative to size. We are outperforming those units that are twice its size. And we like to say. In our world, you know, it doesn't square footage doesn't matter if you can't use it. So usable right. square footage inside a cartridge filter is the most important thing. And that lends itself right back to what Steve was talking about, basic performance. You cannot ignore basic hydraulics. The hydraulics are the hydraulics. And uh and we've made a unit that is far superior relative to size and relative to even what's twice its size. Than, than anybody else out there at this point. So what you're saying is Another bigger is not always better. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> we'll leave that there. We're going to take a quick break. When we get back, Steve and Todd discuss their NSF testing, the double locking thread, and the two different filter sizes. Hi, I'm Rich Gallo with Pure Swim Los Angeles, and this is your Skimmer Tip of the Week. Have you ever had a call that you didn't make a note, you go back the next week and you totally forgot that you were supposed to bring a temp sensor or whatever, and it's over, and the customer went out wants to know, what happened, is the heater working? Oh, I forgot, I didn't record it. That never happens anymore. Now that I have Skimmer, I put that note in immediately when the customer alerts me, and it's locked in for the next visit, and it's done automatically. Thank you, Skimmer. To find out more, check out episodes 138 and 154 of the podcast or go to GetSkimmer.com forward slash pool chasers. That's GetSkimmer.com forward slash pool chasers. Let's talk about the performance, dive down into that a little bit since we're already on that topic. You know, can you discuss your NSF testing data? Because I think that's pretty impressive for your unit. Yeah, that was uh, that was our first product certified, which is kind of scary given we're a drain cover company. Um, and so <laughs> going through that was fascinating because I'd never I've been around the industry a long time, but never done a filter. And um, so the, the the basic way filters are tested, they got to be burst strong enough so they you know they don't explode and all of that kind of stuff. Of which we double in, double engineered that too. The limit, the you got to design for a hundred, but that's not good enough for Aquastar. They, we got to go pass at two hundred, or we're not happy. I love our engineers. <laughs> um, uh, any uh, filter certified to NSF fifty is they do a tank full of yuck of dirt, sand, ball clay, baby oil. Mix it up, stir it up, and then run it through the filter. And a filter has to clean up seventy percent of that mess in five turnovers so that so you filter five times to finally get a pool pool filter clean one that was a bit of an eye opener the other thing is what was so fun about this is we did it in one turnover of the pool and my understanding from nsf and they want to test competitors and all kinds of things to to prove it to show there's a better way kind of a concept is um, it's the first cartridge filter certified that has a, 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 a single turnover passing flow rate. The others in that category are DE filters. And I think they do better um, on a physics level in a single pass. But the, you know, technically speaking, full disclosure on that, 
but what we see in the in the real world with these have been out for over a year is we see DE level water clarity everywhere it's going. That's great, but if it's a pain to live with and service, then it's not so great. And so one of the nice things that also came out of the test is they have to do a cleanability test based on our instructions. And it's just a simple garden hose, stand back, run the garden hose so it sprays down each of the pleats, work your way around the filter. And went just that's all the more it was, even with this clay and baby oil and all that. After that process, it retained 98% of its clean filter performance. And that was another thing they commented on. Um, and that speaks to the even spacing of the pleats and the quality of the material that's used so that, you know, it's just highly effective. And, and all of that's documented from NSF. So we've had people who've questioned the, wait a minute, this thing's tiny compared to this 500 square foot and how it's going to be difficult to clean. And we provide the NSF test report and it's not us making the claim, it's them. Yeah, I mean, when you look at it, right, if you're familiar with looking at filters, which I think most people are, it definitely does not look like the others, right? So it's it, it does give you a little bit of a, wait a minute kind of thing, you know? <laughs> it looks much smaller, one sure. single element, a little bit different, right? Yeah, if you if we if you do a cutaway and we've talked about doing this and all of that, there's there's a way the water comes in from the bottom and gets distributed all the way around that pipeline cylinder and then it's jetted up the sides of the walls, so then the debris uniformly coats. That none of that do you see we know it cuz we designed it and we take it apart. It's not intuitive, especially once you lift the the, the media out. You can't see this stuff. It's a cutaway thing. But the the success in the marketplace and people who live with it and own it or it's on their routes, uh, we're it's going to do well just because it's easy to live with. One of the technical things that's part of the safety feature is it's a double locking um, thread. And what I mean by that is we have an O-ring that and, and it's all held in place by a locking ring. But as you undo the locking ring halfway, it decompresses the O-ring. You're doing it mechanically um, and versus having to hug the top of the filter or scarier yet, bump the pump to try and break that. Because the others, you take a clamp off, now there's that just releases it. That doesn't remove the compression on the O-ring. All of this is done within the design of the filter. So now you're halfway loose. The O-ring is completely uncompressed. So if the pump was running or there was filter uh, pressure built up, now that just blasts down the side. Might get your shoes wet, but it's not. It's not going anywhere. And so it's two two parts. That is safety. But the other thing, it makes it so that you can take this thing apart. And we actually designed it so that hands with fingernails can open it. Yeah, the the band is definitely a very unique design. It's really cool, and you get to see it in person. And you know, it's much different than the traditional you know, need a wrench to take it off, which is which is really cool in my opinion. But you know, we see the stickers on the sides of all the filters. You know, be careful. This thing can blow up. I don't really think you know how dangerous it can be, right? When you're under forty psi pressure or something, where you know, like you, your story in the very beginning. Um, I think we're just also used to going and cleaning filters and, and undoing the top and laying the pressure out that it's kind of just, you know, goes unnoticed, but they're, they're really dangerous tools. One of the most dangerous things on the pad, right? I mean, so the fact that you guys have figured out a way to, to counter that is pretty impressive. My intent, as I looked at everything we do from the safety and compliance kind of perspective was how can we protect people from what they don't know? The homeowners, that's who... I'm concerned with. We we got pool pros and sometimes bad things happen in our world too, but it's the homeowners who don't know. And good golly, now with this Airbnb thing, you want to talk about sure. scary because you don't know who might be in that backyard now. Um, right. And so this the whole idea is you can know nothing and still not hurt yourself. You might ruin your shoes, but we'll get over that. <laughs> yeah. Everybody can get their shoes away a little time here and there. <laughs> so let's talk about the features and benefits so there's two different sizes correct yeah we have a uh, plf uh, 27,000 and a plf uh, 35,000 
and those numbers denote what those units can handle gallon-wise commercially. So um, we, we know when we start looking at residential standards, those numbers go up exponentially. And again, we, we wanted to come to the market based off of performance and what these units can handle, not based off of square footage, right? We've gone through that already. So square footage, you know, we'd like to say in, inside our walls here, square footage never, never cleaned a pool, right? It's all sure. about the performance and, and the usable square footage. So uh, two sizes and the 27, the PLF 27,000 um, has a residential flow rating of up to uh, 150 gallons. And performance wise, we look at when we look at what we're going up against, maybe a 400 square foot, 500 square foot, those systems add 11 to 12 feet ahead to um, the hydraulic system when our unit at 150 GPM only add four feet ahead to the system. So very, you know, outperforming the bigger units, um, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense going back to the size of it, right, for what we've been taught in sure. our industry. So that is ab absolutely, you talked about it earlier, a hurdle we're going to have to get over because we've been taught in our industry that square footage is king when it comes to um, cartridge filters, and it's just not the case. So we understand that that's a hurdle to get over to get over, but we have the we have the data that backs it up, and and the data the data is the data. So um, you know, looking at those two sizes, we feel like you know between our our mid level and our big filter, we can handle ninety nine percent of the pools out there. And then also we set the unit up that has a base where you can link these systems together in a uniform way, build a really simple manifold if you do need to get into the bigger pools and up to 100,000 or even more, and you want to put a couple units on, you can do that very easily with this system. We, we thought about that and we added that to um, the features and benefits of it as well. So um, um, everything from the the flow gauge to uh, the air relief valve um, to our protection skirt on the bottom um, and our PVC connections we we feel like we've kind of thought of everything on this unit um, for the ease of use for for the installer and then also the ease of use for cleanability for the service tech or whoever is getting in there to clean this unit. Yeah, and I, I hope your listeners are sitting down because I'm going to translate and simplify what Todd just said. <laughs> are you? <laughs> so, You're going to simplify it? Yeah, no, 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 no. So when <laughs> I can't resist. I don't so think the, so. When he talked about the head loss difference between <laughs> this one and the existing, so to put that into context, this filter clean is at its maximum flow rate, call it 3 PSI, because we see that on the filter gauge. At the same flow rate, a 500 square foot is up 7 PSI higher. So brand new, out of the box. This one's much smaller, but it has 7 PSI less head loss. So when you're talking about variable speed pumps and how fast you have to run them, this filter, you can add 7 PSI on the pressure gauge before you get to the speed one of these big ones takes brand new out of the box. So that's, you know, the, that head loss translates into seven PSI. And that's at the maximum flow at these giant pools. You know, day in and day out, these things are, these filter gauges are running, what, seven, mm. 10 PSI at these high flow rates for spas and everything. So and then that's go, why the engineering matters. Yeah. And going back sure. to the, the cleanability that he discussed with, we only lose 2% efficiency. I mean, we're, we're seeing hydraulic numbers where we're better after one clean than these bigger units are out of the box. So okay. it, yeah, absolutely. I mean, exponentially better. So um, really hydraulically just outperforming everyone by, by a long shot. And when you talk about, the turbidity test that he spoke of, of passing in one turn relative to the five that they allow you, and then also our basic hydraulics, we're outperforming on basic hydraulics, and we're also outperforming on the cleanability side, right? Why should we have to move water through a unit five times to clean it? Should do it once. We're moving water through a filter to clean it. And that's what we've achieved with this cartridge filter. I think that's 
that's where cartridge filters have fallen short in our industry over the years is is um, the, they're they're cumbersome relative to to hydraulics because of whether it's manifolds or or elements that that they pack a ton of pleats into or or the core is inefficient to the fact that we've got to move water through them more than we should to clean water. Everything pretty much Aquastar focuses on is what is it like to own this product or our products? Um, how is it we focus on the installer? Because if you install equipment, I don't care if it's underground, above ground, in water, at the pad, and you got to go back, you have just creamed your profit potential. Right. Our focus is to be successful out of the box. Um, obviously, we want safety and performance, but if we can focus on the details, Aquastar is known for its water stops and this engineering geeky stuff, but it's all about putting money in the contractor's pocket while making the pool owners happy. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've all seen it, I think, when you're, if you're cleaning a, lot, a bunch of filters like I have, you know, if, if there's a 500 square foot filter, like you said, taught, like the thir- the top third of it isn't even being used right because the plumbing and the pump can only move so much water so quickly so you're not even really getting the benefit of having a larger filter some builders right they don't even really understand they just think they're putting the biggest one on you know a forty thousand gallon pool and it, it the plumbing and you know, the hydraulics can't handle that it doesn't really utilize that so what you're saying really is that you've captured that and really figured out how to use the whole filter the correct way instead of just guessing and making a bigger one, you know, just for fun. Yeah, absolutely. And we're, we're, would that leads me right into the next pain point that we get relative to size is, Hey, we're going to have to clean this more. Mm -hmm. And it is absolutely not true because again, we're using all of our square footage. When you talk about the bigger filters in the 500 square foot, 400 square foot, and you're opening these things up and, and they're only using a third of it or only a third of it's dirty. So let's just say a 400 square foot relative to our 27,000 that has a 200 square foot element in it. You divide that in half. Let's, let's, give them, let's give them half. They're using at least half. Well, we're right there with our unit and we're using all of our square footage. So when it comes down to um, having to clean them more, you know, people are going to run out and they're going to they're going to hear this podcast and they're going to see these filters. Don't let the size fool you. You know, the hydraulic performance is there. The data is there. Um, and then also the fact that you absolutely are not going to have to clean these units more. You're going to think you are because that's what we've been taught. Put in a bigger unit because you won't have to clean it as much. Well, if we're only using a third of that unit anyway, when a third of that unit gets clogged up, your pressures are going to go up and you're going to have to clean it. And your pool is going to become inefficient. So um, that's another a hurdle that we're going to have to get over as a company on the education side, getting to the industry. But yeah, it is, I can't say it enough. That is absolutely true that you do not have to clean our unit more than, than you do any of the bigger units. One of the things we learned as an industry, um, when variable speed pumps came out 15 years ago is, and they were mandated here in California where we're recording this, um, is what we found is when you went to variable speed and they were actually used that way. So you're moving the water slowly for a longer period of time. So instead of turning over the pool once in two hours, run it two turns and then shut it off, you run it 24 seven, much slower um, for less energy. One of the things that was found early on was that those low speeds flows through all existing filters would collect much finer debris. So the floaties you see in, at night in the light would go away. And then what was happening is the flow rate would fall off and skimmers would quit working eight to 10 days after installation. And there was a big research project uh, by PG&E, Davis Energy Group, trying to figure out what, not the industry, trying to figure out what was going on. And they found it was the filters were plugging up with all these floaties that had been in the pool for years that were now in the filter. So the solution, and this is all part of rebate programs and all this, is they basically said, plan, on install a variable speed pump, run it to save energy, know it's going to filter better, and you need to clean your filter in 10 days. Once you clean it, then it's only having to keep up with the dirt that comes into the top of the pool. 
the exact same concept is applying with this cartridge filter, certainly if you replace a, a sand filter. Um, it's going to clean up that pool, and it behooves the installers, pool owners, service folks to go ahead. And it's easy to clean. It's easy to open. Clean it in that 10 to 2 week mark. You know, give it two weeks. And then now that filter is only going to keep up with what's happening in the backyard. So in Arizona, you get, you know, the August dust storms. Well, you got to clean it, right? What goes in must be but uh, removed. But this filter has no disadvantage over the others. What goes in must comes out. And the bottom line, the, the more often you clean your filter, the lower you can run the pump and the more energy you're going to save and the better water quality. So by making this filter easy and safe to get in and out of, um, and easy to clean. The goal is these pools are going to get easier to maintain, despite it being compared to a sci-fi movie robot. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, part of the reason I think that's on is purpose because of with you, it, Steve. That's probably uh, on purpose. Not so well. No, I can't. I can't <laughs> clean credit for that one. But I am a Star Wars geek, um, so <laughs> I'll admit it. <laughs> uh, I saw. I was like, oh yeah, I hadn't thought of that. So, yeah, <laughs> we've seen pictures of people putting stickers on them now. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> We're going to take another quick break. When we get back, we dive further into how often the filters should be cleaned, the Devon Con Rep Edition, and tease a few other products that they're coming out with soon. This episode is brought to you by Leslie's. Leslie's continues to deliver for pool trade professionals by providing benefits no one else can offer. The Leslie's Pro Partner Program can help you grow your business through referrals while also providing their most exclusive pricing and best-in-class warranties on equipment. The Leslie's Pro Partner Program is for pros looking to build a true partnership with their supplier. Stop by your local Leslie's to learn how you can become a pro partner today, or check out episodes 151 and 165 of the podcast for more details. This episode is also brought to you by Primate Pool Tools. Cut through the water with ease with an ultra-strong and super lightweight carbon fiber pole. Primate poles are available in multiple models with length options for every level of service, whether you work on spas or Olympic-sized swimming pools. Their strength makes them ideal for heavy vacuums like Riptide, and their ultralight weight makes cleaning any pool easier. All Primate poles are handmade in the USA, come with a commercial warranty, and are even available in custom print. For more info, click the link below or go to primatepooltools.net. You can also use our special promo code POOLTRACERS2022 for $20 off. And to learn more about the guys behind Primate Pool Tools, check out episodes 104 and 199. I mean, yeah, you're right. So you look at it, and if it looks like a single element filter, typically you would want to clean those every couple of weeks, right? Florida's pretty known for that, like, you know, cleaning them once a month or something. But, you know, with yours, you're saying it will work just like the others, and you can clean them about the same amount of time, right? So four to six months, whatever, like we normally do? I have, you know, yeah, I would say watch the pressure. I, I would, if you're an existing pool or says. startups, obviously we have to clean, you know, you know the, the um, at startup or uh, with a new pool, obviously you got the plaster dust or, or whatever. Sure, sure, you sure. Got it. But if you do an install, clean that filter like at two weeks, after that, watch the pressurize. Because this thing handles a boatload of debris, a pool load of debris, without the filter, you live with it. I mm -hmm. mean, it, and yeah. so I, I believe you could try, it's, it can hold a lot of capacity and the, the pressure gauge gives you your answer. The rubber boot on it even has an arrow. You set it when it's clean and brand new, and then it has a second arrow when it gets to, to 10 PSI. And so i i think people are going to find they don't have to clean this any more often because it's so efficient at capturing dirt sure i mean that, that's what every manufacturer says but you know we go off the four to six month thing <laughs> but yeah you're right that's how you make more money right more filter cleans more money so uh but oh, i like right. that you can oh, do yeah. it i'm sorry i'll get you with, know. i'll get with the program <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> Oh, uh, but no, I think, I think it's a cool that, that it can it keep be, up with those. Uh, we want it to be the service guy's choice, not, sure, sure, sure. you know, we're trying to make your life as easy as we know how. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it competes with, with all their major manufacturer ones and on that same rate of cleaning them. I think it's, that's pretty impressive with the single element, you know, design. So I like it. Um, 
So let's talk about the rep coverage a little bit. You guys have kind of grown your team now. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, really exciting uh, beginning um, uh, May 1st. We've uh, brought on Devin Khan uh, across the country as our number one uh, rep group. Um, they come with a ton of experience, been in the industry for a really long time. Um, all of their salespeople have 15 plus years. There's a couple where they're fairly new to the industry, but uh, 15 plus years, some of them 25 plus years in our industry. They've handled white good lines before, um, and they are crazy excited about the equipment side that, that we're bringing to the table now. So um, we're really happy with bringing them on. We wanted to go a route where we've kept our message really consistent at Aquastar, and we've been able to control that message. And we know there are, are companies out there that'll divide up their their line between different rep groups, uh, one for the West Coast, a different one from the East Coast. But it was really important to us to to keep um, a cohesive group and have one group um, that stood out above the rest across the entire country to able to be able to handle our line and handle our consistent message. Yeah, I think that's important, right? When you're releasing a new product to the world and having people that can help in all the regions definitely makes a big difference in order to help them understand it and utilize it properly. Yeah, and we, um, along with them, and I don't know that we mentioned this on the last podcast, but uh, Mandy Snow is our new uh, national sales manager. So she's going to be overseeing that team. She's worked, uh, she knows them, the whole team very well with moving throughout the country from different venues. And and um, she's she's a huge asset to this company and is going to do very well with that team. And she's crazy excited about having them on board as well. It'll really perpetuate our brand. I mean, we moved from, we moved from four direct sales reps across the country to now four regional sales managers that are going to oversee 26 plus reps across the country now. So, um, you know, we can do, that's easy math to see that we've multiplied our sales force exponentially to help with the new product line and the existing product line. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, I think we mentioned the first podcast just a little bit that you guys, you know, obviously known for the drain covers, but you've seen now other places in the industry that you can help and you're, and you're going for that, right? And you're developing it all mostly in-house and stretching the limits. I think it's really cool to watch you, you know, dive into different areas of the industry. Yeah, we're, um, you know, this is the first part of the equipment pad that we're going after. And, and very soon, um, we can talk about the pipeline. Well, we'll just hit on it. The pipeline uh, pumps that we have coming out. We have two two variable you speed. You mean the NSF authorization? I, yes, the NSF that, authorization. That document. That you just received, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Is that a mic another, drop? Yeah. It might have been. <laughs> another, uh, another project that's been five years in the making and and um, we're, we're, we just crossed the first major finish line with, with NSF. And we're going to have a, um, a horse and a half variable speed and a three horse variable speed. And it's going to fall in line with great hydraulic performances, right in line with, with what we're doing with our filter. So um, we're looking at a launch on that here very soon. And that's about all we'll say about yeah. the pump. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot yeah. going more, in. More to come. It. Yeah, yes. absolutely. That's another one we designed from the water out. And so every aspect of this, I think, you, uh, you know, our audience is going to be very pleased when the day comes. Yeah. And that leads, you know, once we have the full pad, we've our people maybe don't know, we've done sweep elbows, we do return fittings, white goods, unions, all kinds of stuff. And the common thread through all of this, so to speak, is moving water. And with variable speed pumps and energy efficiency and everything that's going on in this day and age, water conservation, that's our system level design approach. And now that we have everything kind of out on the pad, people will begin to see, oh, there was a lot more going on behind the scenes with as we looked at water moving from the drains and skimmers through the pump, filter, some other stuff coming behind it. Um, so we really want, again, I, I reiterate, our goal is to make the pool industry successful and pool ownership easy. And that's our focus. Right. 
Yeah, it's super awesome to watch you guys from drain covers to what you're doing now. It's pretty impressive. So keep it up. I think the industry is going to really be appreciative of all you're doing, you know, here shortly because it's it's definitely going to change the way a lot of us think. So um, how do people reach out to you and get more information? Uh, go to our website, aquastarpoolproducts.com. You can find your regional managers in your area. Um, our website is loaded with information. And um, yeah, you can reach out to us at the office, emails, phones. We're all available. We spend most of our day talking with clients. Um, so again, like Steve says, we're, we're, we're trying to raise the bar for the industry, which brings, you know, it bring, brings more pools to the industry. You have happy homeowners with, with pools. They tell their neighbors and they build pools. So that's kind of our, our MO. Yeah. And the guy, Aquastar pool products, sometimes the S I forget before the dot com. <laughs> so, <laughs> Make sure there's uh, an I S always on read it. it that because my that <laughs> my finger forgets the S sometimes. Uh, yeah, and and you know one thing is I think we're probably known. Certainly, I am. I've done a lot of education on all things variable speed pumps, filters, um, now filters, uh, drain covers, and all that. Is we as a we are trying to help our industry succeed and be better. Yeah, we might compare ourselves to the competitors, but we're all in this together. So we're not in the business of bashing. If you attend, uh, you know, training seminars and things out and about this next show season now that we're free to boom about the country, you know, I'll say, look us up. We know how to have a good time, too. <laughs> For <laughs> sure. And next time I'm going to let Todd start the story, because every time you start, Steve, there's some kind of death or, you know, sad, sad story <laughs> to start off the podcast. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, no you're good i'm just messing with you um appreciate you both always enjoy it (laughs) i always enjoy talking with you guys and developing a real friendship with you and just love watching what you're doing so thanks again for being on the podcast yeah we love what you're doing for the industry yes thank you i learn a lot by listening to, to to your guests and what you guys do our industry is getting way better because of the kinds of things you're and others are doing i appreciate that and we'll put all the links in the show notes for everything so you can get all the information. But we'll talk to you guys soon, hopefully about those pumps. <laughs> yep. <laughs> See you later. Thank you, sir. Bye. Hey, Pool Chasers. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode. To connect with today's guests, including pictures, links, and resources from everything discussed today, you can visit the episode page at poolchasers.com or click the links below. To connect more with us, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter by searching at Pool Chasers. If you would like to support the podcast, the easiest and most effective way is to subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube, as well as share the show or your favorite episode with a friend or on social media. Also, you can get early access to each episode by supporting us through Patreon. We know your time is valuable, so thank you for sharing some of yours with us today. See you out there, pool chasers. chasers.